الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده ولا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد أول شيء حياكم الله brothers and sisters in uh, this uh, يعني short course during Friday yeah, this is, I know this is the off day for you usually you enjoy this day with your family but uh, alhamdulillah you compromise and you come to this halqa and I hope it will be uh, very beneficial for me and for you and uh, it will be in the day of judgment as hasanat bidnillah طيب uh, إن شاء الله المشن uh, that we start for but now it is about 420 so إن شاء الله now we have uh, about uh, يعني 100 minutes إن شاء الله until المغرب we'll have إن شاء الله in between short break then between المغرب and عشاء also we have about uh, 50 minutes then after عشاء إن شاء الله there will be also uh, 50 minutes بإذن الله then we'll have uh, the dinner. El, uh, the, the aim, we should know the aim of this course el, to give the basics of Aqeedah. طيب, and this is, uh, it, it will not include everything in Aqeedah. Yani, inshallah, uh, I need about four courses like this, or four workshops for this, like this. Yani, for, one for general Aqeedah, inshallah. Uh, synopsis of Aqeedah and one about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also I need one day for the names of Allah and one hour I speak about the rules of the, the names of Allah and the attributes of Allah and the other three hours about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can spend about three minutes with every name to give the meaning okay uh, and the third workshop inshallah will be about the <coughs> the, the hereafter Minor signs, major signs, the arasat yawm al-qiyamah, what will happen during the day of judgment, and at the end, the, the hellfire and the paradise. Also, we need uh, about uh, يعني, four hours, five hours. And also, the fourth one uh, will be about uh, the topics of Kitab Tawheed. Okay, to talk in details about the kinds uh, of shirk, the major minor shirks. So, and also something, يعني, we can classify it as وعليكم السلام as uh, part of the aqidah, the أعمال القلوب. يعني we can consider this as the fifth one, أعمال القلوب. Okay, the, the actions of the hearts, like the love, the fear, the tawakkul, the khayshah. This is also very important. We need one for them. Inshallah, يعني generally this is the, the plan. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. Uh, is it clear the Instagram? If you have Instagram, is it okay? Shino Hada? Okay, come on. This is the water? Tayyip, Tayyip. Tayyip. Inshallah, we are preparing the notes. Photocopier. Inshallah. In a few minutes, inshallah, they will be ready. I have uh, books. Uh, inshallah, there will be. Uh, it is not an exam. What questions uh, to check who is with me, who's following, who's writing, who's memorizing? Tayyib, inshallah, bidnillah. Tayyib, ready? Tayyib. Our uh, with the notes, with our, with our notes, the synopsis of Aqidah. The term Aqidah, the term Aqidah, 
Okay, this is one of the terms used by the scholars to talk about the, the faith and the belief in the heart, mainly. Okay, and they use different terms. Aqeedah, Iman, Usul Sunnah, or Sunnah, Tawheed, al fuq Al-Akbar. Okay, they use the, the term Aqeedah, Al-Iman, yani these terms, all of them mean the Aqeedah. Sunnah, or Usul Sunnah, uh, Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar. Okay? Yani, if you want to read about Aqeedah, about the creed, okay, you go to the bookstores and you ask about these uh, names, these titles. Where are the books of Aqeedah? Usul Al-Sunnah, Usul Al-Deen, okay? طيب. What is the meaning of Aqeedah? Aqeedah, it is, I, I mean, an, as an Arabic word, it is like the nod, okay? When you tie something to make it strong, okay? Like when you tie your shoes. To make it strong, uh, sorry, to make it tight, then it will not fall. So it will make it strong. So al it means something strong in the heart. So it means al-iman al-jazm, certainty, belief. And there is no doubt which goes correctly with the reality. It is not something fake. It is not something imaginary. No, it goes with the fact, with the reality. Waqa. Okay, so this is very important. Something related uh, with, with the heart. Tayyib. What, what are the sources of Aqeedah? This is very important. Now I want to study Aqeedah. From where? We study the Aqeedah from the Quran and authentic Sunnah. Authentic, it should be authentic, Sahih. We study the Aqeedah from the Quran and from the authentic Sunnah. And I like to talk briefly about the Sunnah because you'll find in the books of Aqeedah they classify the Sunnah mutawatir wa ahad. It is important, yani. why? Because nowadays they mention this term, mutawatir and ahad. And maybe you hear the term that in Aqeedah, when we study the faith, we don't consider the ahadith which are ahad. We take only the mutawatir. Okay, briefly, what is the difference between mutawatir and ahad? طيب. If you study the hadith, okay, the companions hear the hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Then they generate this hadith to the next generation, which is called Tabi'een. Then from Tabi'een to the next, which is called Tabi'een, tabi until the uh, scholars who, who, who wrote the books of hadith. If there is one line from the Prophet Sallallahu to the companion to, until the book, the author of the book, for example, Bukhari, one line or two lines, three lines, okay, they call it, muta, uh, sorry, they call it Ahad. Who narrated this hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu For example, Umar al-Khattab. Then who took it from Umar al-Khattab? Al-Qam al-Waqqas. Who took it from Al-Qam al-Waqqas? Muhammad Ibrahim Taymi. Who took it from Muhammad Ibrahim Taymi? Uh, Yahya Sa'id al-Ansari. Okay? So they call it Ahad. Okay? The word Ahad in Arabic means Wahid, one. Okay? So many people think, I mean, who don't, who did not study the knowledge of hadith, they think, they think only one person narrated this hadith. But if you study the knowledge of hadith, no, it can be one, two, three, up to nine, maybe. So, some people of al bid'a, the innovation, who innovates the bid'a, they say, no, we should classify the ahadith. Those who narrated through only one line or two, one companions, two, three companions, this is ahad. And we don't consider this a hadith in aqeedah, only in fiqh. And if this hadith narrated from the Prophet, the Prophet said this hadith, then a group of companions, 
15, 16, 20, took this hadith. Then the second generation also, 20, 30 people took it. We, we say this is mutawatir, a group to a, another group. This uh, the other group to the third group. This is called mutawatir. It's okay? Can you distribute the, yes, please. Huh? Okay, okay. Tayyip? To make it simple, now we are inside the lajna. If one person told us it is raining outside, this is ahad. If two persons, still ahad. But imagine, one brother came from Fahil and the other from Salmiya, the other from Al Andalus, the other from Jahra. So 20 people from different areas came and they, info they gave us the same information, which is it is raining outside. This is mutawatir. Okay, but if one person came and he said, or two or three, they say it is raining outside, we said this is ahad. They say the Ahl bid'ah, we don't consider the hadith of ahad in aqidah, but people of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah know. We take the hadith, is it ahad or mutawatir, we don't worry. Our concern is it authentic or not? Okay, so that's why we came back to our point, we take the aqidah from the Quran and from the authentic Sunnah, and that's it. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to send one or two companions to give, to give da'wah. The famous hadith, he sent Mu'ad to Yemen, one. Okay? The Prophet Sallallahu did not say no, because he will teach them aqidah, I should send 10 people. One is enough. So please, if you see the term ahad, we don't consider the hadith of ahad in aqidah, this is wrong opinion. So we should study the, the aqidah from the Quran and authentic sunnah. Clear? So what is the source of aqidah? Quran and authentic sunnah. Tamam. Next point. How should we understand the aqidah? We should understand the aqidah according to the understanding of the companions, the sahaba. And also the scholars from the tabi'een and also the scholars from the Tabi' Tabi'in, the three generations. Tamam? The next question, why? They are human beings, the companions. Okay, why sh we should, it is must, it is wajib to study, uh, sorry, to understand the Aqeed according to the companions. طيب. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, سورة التوبة والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه الله says in سورة التوبة and the first to embrace Islam of the مهاجرين and the أنصار and also those who followed them exactly in faith Allah is well pleased with them as they are well pleased with him so this is Tazkiyah, this is, يعني Allah, Allah gave them the Tazkiyah, the first generation, Muhajirin wa Ansar. The proof number two, Allah says in the Quran, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا وَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ فَسَيَكْفِكَ هُمُ اللَّهِ This is more, this is a clearer ayah. And it is important to memorize this ayah. طيب, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Okay, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah talks, يعني, surah, it is the longest surah in the Quran. So in some ayat, Allah talks about the Yahud Nasara, صح? the Christian and Jews. So how they will be accepted, in, sorry, how they will be, uh, their faith is accepted. Allah says, so if they believe in the like of that which you believe, okay, of course, here the word you, because in English it is not clear. Maybe you understand from the word you here, the Prophet But in Arabic, what is the meaning? فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ It means the companions. Huh? Yes, I mean here in English it is written you. So maybe you understand the Prophet only. No, it doesn't mean only the Prophet Sallallahu it means the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions. Okay? فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ It is a plural. 
amantum. Allah did not say, Fain amanu bimithi ma amantah. Allah is not talking only up to the Prophet ﷺ, all the companions. So, you un we understand from the ayah that they have to believe in what the companions had believed in. Clear or not clear? This is very important. Wadah? Not clear? Tamam. The third proof in Surah An Nisa, Allah says, "Wama yushaqiq al Rasul." من بعد ما تبين له الهدى ويتبع غير سبيل المؤمنين نوله ما تولى ونصله جهنم وساءت مصيره and whoever contradicts and opposes the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد after the right path has been shown clearly to him and follows other than the believer's way Allah did not say only the Prophet ﷺ, also he add the believer's way. Okay, who were the believers at that time of Rasulullah The companions. So the scholar said, these ayat mean you have to follow the way of the companions. Clear? There is hadith also, the famous hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, we will fall, uh, a time will come to this, to my ummah, okay? Like the, uh, they will follow Bani Israel, the children of Israel. Like the steps of the slippers, okay? Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Bani Israel, okay, divided into 72 sects. And there is another hadith, the Yahud 71, the Christians 72. And he, then he said, and my ummah, my nation will be divided into how many? 73 sects. The Prophet وسلم, said, all of them will be in the hellfire. Except one. Immediately the companion said, who is the saved sect? Now don't worry about those who will be in the hellfire. Now the problem, some Muslims think, who are the 72 will be in the hellfire? The Asha'ira, the Sufiya, the Habibi. You should follow the companions. The companions ask about the saved sect, the saved group. Think and be worried about what will save you. So the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِي the saved sect will be those who, who, are follow, who are following what I am on, me and my companions. They are following my way and the way of my companions. So if you want to save yourself, you have to follow the way of Rasulullah وسلم, and also the way of the companions. They are, of course, the way of Rasulullah وسلم, not, is not different than the way of Rasul, uh, the companions. They are the same. They are only one way. Taman. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Khayrun Nas Qarni, the best generation is my generation. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Bilal, Abu Huraira, wa Ammar, wa Aisha, wa Hafsa, wa Habiba, wa Mu'awiyah, Abu Sufyan. This is the best generation. Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhum. Tayyib? So, uh, all of these uh, proofs tell you that the understanding of the companions is a must. It is not optional. I mean, as a Muslim, you don't have the option to choose, well, no, I don't like the way of the companions. I should choose another way. No. If you are Muslim, if you love Allah, if you love Rasulullah, if you want to save yourself, you have to follow the way of the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. Tayyip? So this is very important. This is as introduction. So I hope you know now, why should we follow the way of companions? Is it clear? Tamam? We go to the next point. Some definitions. What is the definition of Islam? Iman, Ihsan, okay? And everyone, I will give two definitions. 
One definition from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Hadith Jibreel, the famous Hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Jibreel, what is Islam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the, the famous definition, Islam, shahadatan, salah, zakah, song, hajj, the five pillars of Islam. Tamam? What is Iman? The six pillars of Iman and Tu'mina Billahi, Malaikati, Kutubihi, Warusuli, Walyom al Akhir, Wa Tu'min Bil Qadr, Khairi wa Sharri. Inshallah, we'll talk about this. What is Ihsan? To worship Allah as if you see Allah. If you don't see Him, Allah sees you. This is Ihsan. Okay? So, for the Islam, also the scholars mention another definition Islam, originally from which word in Arabic? Islam to submit. Islam means submission. It means you have to submit yourself to Islam. What Allah says, khalas, I submit myself to Allah's orders. Don't think, don't yani, reject, don't hesitate. You have to follow. You are a followers. You are followers. You are submitters. You have to submit. If you are Muslim, if you are Muslim. So if you are claiming that I am Muslim, you should submit for all the rules of Islam. So Islam means Islam submission. And why I mentioned this definition? Because many Muslims, when we advise them, okay, you have to do this. You should not do this. This is haram. This is wajib. They don't accept. Why? They say, ana hur. Ana hur. What's me ana hur? I am free. No, this is my freedom. Habibi, if you claim that you are hur, then you are not Muslim. Or not, you are not a real Muslim. The real Muslim should say, Sami'na wa ata'na. We listen and obey. Okay. What is the definition of iman? Okay. The other one. The scholars say, iman, qawlun bil lisan, wa amalun bil arkan, وَتَصْدِيقٌ بِالْجَنَانِ Iman means some, uh, a saying by your tongue, an action by your limbs, and a belief by your heart. You have to join these three items. Tongue, heart, limbs. And the proof, the Prophet ﷺ said, الْإِيمَانِ بِضْعٌ وَسِتُّونَ شُعْبَةٌ Iman, sum and 60 parts. What is the highest in faith, in Iman? Qawlu la ilaha illallah. Qawlu la ilaha illallah. So the highest, to say la ilaha illallah. So this is an action of the tongue. Wa adnaha, what is the lowest? Imatatul ada anil tariq, to remove the stone from the road. This is by your limbs, by your hands, by your legs. Then he said, وَالْحَيَاءُ شُعْبَةٌ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ Modesty. Where is the modesty? Where is the shyness? In the heart. So the iman includes all of them. These are three. طيب. إحسان. What does it mean, إحسان? إحسان means إتقان. To perfect your deeds. To perfect your deeds. تمام? Any question so far? Please, you have to understand everything. If you have any doubt, ask me. Also, the sisters, can they can send inshallah through the WhatsApp or Instagram their question. Because inshallah, next week you can't teach this subject. All of you, shiuk, inshallah. Okay. Okay. So, if we mention the Iman, the, meaning, the definition of Iman, we should realize this concept because it is very important and it is dangerous to misunderstand this point, Iman. Okay? Uh, we should believe that the Iman, the faith, goes up and down. The Iman goes up and down. Yeah, and for example, during Ramadan, Usually your Iman is up or down? 
very up. You pray every night, mashallah, the tarawih with the imam, and maybe you pray at alone, and you read the Quran, you attend the halqa, you do umrah, you give charity, you are fasting every day. So subhanallah, your faith and your iman during Ramadan is different than other months. And this is not, your iman in the halqa, your iman in the masjid is not like your iman, I mean the level of your iman, when you are in the avenue, for example, or in the jam'iyah, or in the be on the beach. So the iman goes up and down. The scholars say, your iman goes up if you are doing good deeds. Your iman goes down if you are doing sins and bad deeds. And this doesn't mean that if you do a sin, you are kafir, you are non-Muslim. No, this is the methodology of the khawarij. Like ISIS. And also the khawarij from the time of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala. Why they killed Uthman? Because of this concept. They believe he is kafir, so we kill him. And the same thing, he, they killed Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Because they believe he is kafir. And they think that he did a sin, because he did a sin, he is kafir. Okay, we mentioned this before. This is not the place for, for the details. Taib. So, we have to be careful about this concept. Those who commit sins, major or minor, they are Muslims. Yeah, and for example, if the, one, of the, one of the brothers pray, prays with us, the five prayers, he's giving zakah. Okay, he's fasting Ramadan, but he drinks khamr. He is Muslim or not? He is Muslim. Is he a perfect Muslim? No, he's not perfect Islam. So the scholars say, هو مؤمن بإيمانه فاسق بمعصيته. He is a believer. He is a Muslim because he 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 witnessed the 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 shahada. He prays, but he is fasiq. He is disobedient disobedient because of the khamr, the these major sins. طيب. So those who commit the major sins, okay, they are Muslims. Okay, but they are not perfect Muslims. Naqs, their, their faith is uh, less. Tamam? About the aqidah, there is a very important concept which is al-iman bil-ghayb. Al-iman bil-ghayb, to believe in the unseen. Okay, you like the angels. Do we see the angels? No, they are unseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is ghayb subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the unseen world for us. We don't see Allah. But of course we believe that we, we see Allah. I mean the believers see Allah the day of judgment in the paradise. And this is the best, the best thing. So you have to believe in this concept. You have to be careful about this concept, the unseen. Because now, nowadays, people like to touch everything. If you speak with them, you should show, you should show them something. Okay, if you talk about the angels, if you talk about the punishment in the grave, they will not believe. Why? They say, you have to show me. Where is the punishment in the grave? You have to show me where is the jinn. No, there is no jinn. There is no, no angels. And a'udhu billah, there is no God. Why? Because we don't see the Allah. A'udhu Billah. No, as part of our Iman, we have to believe in the unseen. What is the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah? Al-Ladheena yu'minuna bil-ghayb. One of the criteria, one of the attributes of the believers, they believe in the unseen. Tamam? Tayyib. And, question, yes. الغيب what is the meaning of الغيب الغيب ما غاب عنك what الغيب means what is absent الغيب what is absent and there are two types of غيب there is غيب نسبي a relative relatively غيب يعني for example uh, uh, what is happening uh, in the جمعية do we know what is happening in the جمعية we don't know so this is called ghayb. 
This is unseen for us. But for those who are in the Jam'iyyah, they know what is happening inside, صح? So it is unseen for us, but it is not unseen for them. This is called Ghayb Nisbi, relatively. We are not talking about this Ghayb Nisbi, we are talking about the, un, the general unseen. General uh, Ghayb. Okay, yeah, and for, for example, the angels. None of us see the angels now. And Allah, we, are, we don't see Allah. Okay? This is the point. Okay. And also, yeah, uh, some of the Ghayb like, إن الله إن الله عنده علم الساعة the last ayat of Surah Al-Luqman إن الله عنده علم الساعة زاكر إن الله عنده علم الساعة وينزل الغيث ويعلم ما في الأرحام وما تدي نفسه ماذا تكسب غدا وما تدي نفسه بأي أرض تموت okay the five things مفاتيح الغيب خمس لا يعلمون الله these five things no one knows them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? What, what is the time of the hour, the day of judgment? We don't know. Even Jibreel doesn't know. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't know. What is inside the womb of the woman? Okay? We don't know. Yes, now they know, male, female, but they don't know he is alive or not alive. He will comes out alive. He will be Muslim, he will be Kafir, he will be black, white, uh, crazy, uh, intelligent. We don't know the details. At what age he will die, we don't know. Allah only knows this, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the ghayb. And no one knows the ghayb generally except Allah. This is also very important. The prophets don't know the ghayb. قُلْ لَا يَعْلِمْ in Surah Al-Naml, Allah says, قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Brothers and sisters, uh, it is very important uh, to memorize certain ayat for aqeedah. Because we need this, this ayat. Okay? We need this ayat to, to give you يعني, strong discussion. Because nowadays, subhanAllah, يعني, you are not discussing the non-Muslims, you are discussing the Muslims. And sometimes your children. Sometimes your children, subhanAllah. Yeah, honey, uh, your, your children come home from the school, or yeah, honey, the challenge in the school from the students or from the teachers, subhanAllah. The world inside this, this school. So your, your children come to you at home with strange ideas. So you need to prepare yourself to teach your children. It is not our topic. Uh, yes, there is an, a very important point about the aqeed and the unseen. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, وَنَحْنُ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّ الرُّسُلْ لَا يُخْبِرُونَ بِمُحَارَاتِ الْعُقُولِ طيب. uh, بل, Sorry, بِمُحَالَاتِ الْعُقُولِ بَلْ بِمُحَارَاتِ الْعُقُولِ فَلَا يُخْبِرُونَ بِمَا يحيل العقل انتفاءه بل يخبرون بما يعجز العقل عن معرفته. This is very important. Ibn Taymiyyah. Also, another scholar, Ibn Abi al-Izz al-Hanafi, the one who explains Aqid al-Tahawiyya. Okay. الشرع لا يأتي بما تحيله العقول ولكنه قد يأتي بما تحار فيه العقول. In the Sharia, okay, there is nothing impossible. Nothing in the Sharia is impossible. Yani for example, Jibreel has 600 wings. Okay? Is it impossible? It is not impossible. No, it is not impossible. This is possible. Okay? But can you imagine this? Maybe we cannot imagine this. Maybe you cannot imagine this. If I tell you, Allah, imagine a horse with four wings. Maybe you cannot imagine this, okay? So, Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Abil Izz al-Hanafi, they mean, in the Sharia, sometimes you come to some issues, okay? Maybe you cannot absorb them, you cannot imagine. You try your best to think. You cannot uh, يعني, perceive this information. But it is not impossible. It is not impossible. طيب? 
Okay, so again, in the Sharia, okay, there is nothing impossible. But there are so, a certain information difficult for you to, to maybe to absorb or to imagine. This is very important statement. Why? Because when you come to study the names of Allah, the attributes of Allah, then you say, okay. And the famous statement from Imam Malik. A man came to Imam Malik and he asked him, Oh Imam, Ar Rahman ala al Arsh istawa, kayf istawa. Oh, oh Imam Malik. Allah says in the Quran, Ar Rahman ala al Arsh istawa, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this verse in the Quran. Several times, six, seven times. He said, how did he, yani how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the istiwa? Okay. The question of this man about how. He did not ask about the meaning. Okay. He asked about how. Imam Malik said, al-istiwa ma'loom. The meaning of the word is tawa is common in the language. In Arabic language, if you check Arabic language, what is the meaning of tawa? To rose on something. Istawaytu ala sayyara. Yani, I am above the car. So Allah rose, subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the throne. So in Arabic language, the meaning of tawa is clear. طيب how Imam Malik said والكيف غير معلوم and the how is unknown for us we don't know how why because we do not see Allah سبحانه وتعالى طيب the scholars say if you want to know something you can you can know this thing through three things okay number one when I see Okay, yeah, yeah, for example, about istiwa. I don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the istiwa, how he rose above the throne. I don't know why. Because I did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This number one. Number two, because I did not see anything like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, because the Prophet وسلم, did not describe for us how Allah rose above the throne. طيب يعني for example if I say, if I tell you Alhamdulillah uh, I bought a house then you ask me how's your house how it looks like okay number one I can't tell you this is my house you can't see my house so how came you, how you came to know my house by by looking you you saw my house so this is number one number two I, I tell you, well, I bought a house. How's your house? Can you see this house? Exactly, my house like this house. So now you came to know my house because you saw something similar. طيب. This is number two. Number three, I bought a house. How's your house? Okay, my house is 400 meters square. Three floors. It is in the corner, okay, uh, yellow color. So I start to describe my house in details. So how, how did you come to know my house? By my description. And you trust me because this is my house. So did we see Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala? No. Anyone is like Allah, similar to Allah? No. Did the Prophet describe Allah for us exactly in, in, in the istiwa? No. So, خلاص, what should we say? Is it okay? Come on. So, that's why we say we don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the istiwa. He rose above the throne. So please, brothers and sisters, it is not allowed. Went above the throne. We don't know. Okay?
break one minute to distribute the notes or half a minute only. Abu Abdullah, did you sing to the sisters? They have, huh? Sing to the sisters before the brothers. Habibi. Tayyib. We are on page number three. طيب خلاص ابو عبد الله ابو عبد الله يلا يس انتو ذا سيسترز جزاكم الله خير طيب بيج نمبر 3 اهميه العقيده ذا امبورتنس اوف عقيده يعني تو ستدي ذا عقيده ان تو نو ذا عقيده تو ابلاي ذا عقيده ان يور لايف Number one, تحقيق السعادة الحقيقية to achieve the real happiness. And I mention here the real happiness. Not the happiness, the real happiness. Because there is temporary happiness. We want the, the real happiness. Allah says in the Quran, من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة طيب من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة okay. Whoever works righteousness whether male or female while he or she is true believer verily to him verily to him we will give a good life طيب شيخ الاسلام تيميه one of the great scholars he was in the jail many times سبحان الله so one time they said he gave a statement it means the real happiness ماذا يفعل اعدائي بي what my enemies are trying to do okay it means they cannot do anything bad to me he gave the three choices قتلي شهادة ونفي سياحة وسجني وسجني خلوة. شيخ سام تيمية said what my enemies are trying to do with me. If they kill me, then I am شهيد, I am a martyr. If they fire me from the country, then this is good. Good tourism, I go and I can see the other countries, I can seek knowledge from other scholars, I can teach people different countries, this is good. The third, if, when they put me in the jail, this is the best time for what? Quran, khalwa. I sit with myself. Yeah, subhanAllah, this is very important. Okay, this is a side point يعني, for brothers and sisters. It is very important to stay alone for some time. Think about your sins. Read the Quran carefully. Okay. Plan for your akhirah, for the hereafter. Okay. Not all the time uh, business with my kids, with my children, in the, in the market, shopping. You sh you ne we need we need time for our hearts. طيب. So this is the real happiness with Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, "Ajab al Amr al-Mu'min." Yeah, Subhanallah, it is ajeeb, the, the believer. Everything is good for him. If there is a problem, he will be patient. And this is, mashallah, he will get the reward of patience, of getting patient. If he has something good, he will be thankful. 
he will show the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in any, any case, the believer is winner. So this is what I, I meant by the real happiness. The real happiness where? In the halqa. The real happiness where? In the masjid. The real happiness where? When you give. Subhanallah, when you teach, when you learn, when you read Quran, when you help others. Wallahi, this is, يعني, subhanallah, one of the scholars said, we have something, okay, that the kings don't have. And if they know that we have this, they will fight us by their swords. He means the real happiness. This scholar means the satisfaction. Al-Ridha. Al-Ridha. The satisfaction. If you have riba, khalas, you are a rich man. The self rich, rich man. Number two, the importance of aqidah. Your deeds will not be accepted without aqidah. Uh, authentic aqidah. Allah says in the Quran, وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا Allah is saying in the Quran about the disbelievers, and we shall turn to Whatever deeds they did, and we shall make such deeds as scattered, floating particles of dust. Aisha asked the Prophet ﷺ about a famous man, but not Muslim, Kafir. His name, Abdullah ibn Jud'an. He is one of the great people in Quraysh. Aisha said, oh Rasulullah, this man was feeding the poor and serving the hujjah, yani doing great deeds. Will these deeds be beneficial for him at the Day of Judgment? The Prophet Sallallahu said, no. Why? <coughs> إِنَّهُ لَمْ يَقُلْ يَوْمًا رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ He never asked Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala for forgiveness. It means he doesn't believe in Allah. It means his aqeedah is wrong. So, the correct aqeedah, the sound creed, means this is one key for your deed to be accepted. Okay, because there are two keys. We mentioned them last week, صح? Huh? This is the ikhlas, the aqeedah. The second one, al-mutaba'ah, to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. I like to have a break. Alaykum salam. Five minutes. Forty. Okay. Or you are interested to... I am tired. <laughs> okay, shall we have a break to drink some coffee, some tea, some water, to walk? Okay, or if you don't read Surah Al-Kahf, you can read Surah Al-Kahf. Inshallah. Zakum Allah khair.